It's Saturday morning and I'm currently heading to a small repair job I had uh, come in a couple of weeks ago. Now what I thought I'd do today is run through the job pretty much step by step to show you what the overall cost of it will be. So this will be materials, the labour, the scaffolding, because this is going to be a chimney repair. So the full cost of the job, which I'll break down later on in the video. And also, just to mention, this job is for a family member, so there'll actually be no charge on my end. But what I'll do, I'll explain what I would usually charge for a job like this and how I arrive at that figure later on. Just been to MKM, picked up 10 uh, LBC Heathers, um, which are the worst brick going, but hey ho, one pound a brick plus VAT. So very expensive for the quality of brick, but we won't go into them. I've already got sand and spent from build base, because that was just closer and cheaper. So head into the job now. So you can see that this is today's job. This is what we're doing. We're replacing the top few courses off this chimney. Obviously chimneys get battered by the rain, freeze thaw cycle in winter. So it's all just starting to crumble and it's just really weak now. So we're just taking it down to this level here, rebuilding it back up and put some new flooring on the top. So we're gonna get stuck in and start taking it down. So this is how we're looking at the moment, just taking the cap off to stop birds from coming in. And you can just see how all the mortar has just totally turned to dust. So this is the brick I've just pulled off from the chimney, one of the last courses I'm taking down. And this is quite a nice example of um, the damage, you know, the freeze thaw cycle dust to your mortar, especially on a chimney stack. Now you can see the original mortar here, which I do believe I do think this is actually sand and cement, but quite a weak mix. I don't think it's actually lime, because this house was built in the 60s, I wanna say. Um, but you can see how it's been repointed with this really hard sand and cement, probably about 15 mils worth, and it is rock hard stuff. So I don't wanna say that all the sand and cement behind this, or the lime mortar, it's failed because of this, because it is a chimney and it's exposed constantly to the elements. But having this really hard material isn't any good for the breathability of the existing mortar on these sort of old properties. So this is the height we're taking the chimney down to. I think in total I've taken five or six courses off. It's interesting to see how strong all this brickwork is here compared to those top five or six courses and that's just because all the elements are coming over this ridge and it's blasting the chimney so wind rain snow freeze thaw so those top few courses have totally been battered over the years you can see around this side it's really windy now i do need to replace two of these bricks but what i'm going to do i'm going to build back up and then i'll gently take these out later on that's actually a really fair point. If we build up first, it's going to disturb everything. I might have to take these out now. Uh, to remove these bricks here without disturbing the entire chimney, what I'm going to do is drill a load of holes with a 7mm drill bit all around them and they should just slot out nicely and I'll be able to replace them just before I start rebuilding this. Thank you very much grandma. After that lunch we've got our compo made up and we're going to start rebuilding. Now it's almost 11 o'clock so really I need to make sure this is built up to a decent height um, before 12 because I need to probably go back to MKM to get some sharp sand so I can do all the flaunching on the top. So we're going to get stuck in and I'll catch up in a little bit.
quickly just heading back to MKM right before it closes. Hopefully I get there in time. Gonna go get some sand and two sharp sand, maybe a bit more cement. So we've got a nice strong cap on the top. I love going to that merchant in Derby. Um, because a couple of my subscribers work there. One of them, Jim, I am a um, Jim works there. So it's always nice to have a good chat with him. Um, but yeah, anyway, we're now on the way back after having a chat with everyone. And let's just get this wrapped up. Now, around the back of the house, I mentioned we're using the new bricks. So let me show you why. So here's the old brick. There's my new LBC. Um, regarding colour, it's not a bad match at all. So I'm quite happy with that. Although they do look a bit newer, so I do want to put them around the back. I'm putting these older ones, which are in good condition, on the front. There's also a slight size difference. Okay, so when we've got a size difference like that, it needs two larger perps. You can see. Obviously, I've not brushed this up or anything yet. But I've got big perps, so I'm trying to hide all the big perps around the back. Um, so yeah, that's what we're currently working with. So, something else to consider when rebuilding chimneys is the actual state of the chimney. Now you can see that my level is touching the entire chimney, but it's massively out of plumb, okay? Now when I've rebuilt chimneys in the past, I've gone plumb. But if you do that and then you look from down the road, it looks like it's leaning and then your new work, which is correct and plumb, kicks out. So in a weird way, it actually looks wrong. So all I'm doing, I'm just following the profile of the chimney all the way around. I'm not trying to correct it too much because otherwise my new work will look really out of character. It will just have a massive kink in it. So kind of being wrong to look right. Oh, it's so windy. Um, just running out the blue copings above to make sure they all trace round nicely. Anyway, I'm going to crack on because it's too windy to even film. Right, so I've just wrapped up and we're just having a bit of a tidy up right now, just taking care of all the rubbish I dropped. So I'm going to throw some tools in the van, take away any rubbish and then we'll go over the costs of this job. Now I'm going to answer a question you might be thinking, why didn't I rebuild the entire chimney itself? Because obviously it is quite tired. The main reason is that I'm trying to save money for my grandma so maybe if it's a different client and they wanted the entire chimney doing but she was just adamant to make sure that the spoiled bricks or damaged bricks weren't going to fall and damage their neighbor's car and things like that hence why I also reused a lot of bricks only ended up using and buying 10 LVC heathers which came to about 10 pounds um, so if I can reuse the old bricks and try and save her money, that's what I'm going to do. Right, tidy up and then we'll go over the price and I think that's a good day. So, God, my hairline. Right, we've just got home and I left with cake. So that's my payment. Quite happy with that in all fairness. So the job went all right. Obviously, couldn't do loads of filming up there. It was so windy so so windy i didn't i needed two hands basically constantly one with the trowel and one holding on to something so i couldn't really uh have my phone in my hand doing all the filming so it is what it is but anyway we wanted to break down the price of this job so let's start with the access which is scaffold now the scaffolding came to 300 pound that's 300 pound for scaffolding the materials which was 10 bricks 
some slate what I used bag of cement two sharp sand two sand uh, came to 35 pound in total which is not too bad and then we have the costs of myself now obviously I'm not charging my grandma for this job so this is just an example now I never really thought about this until I spoke to a couple of a lot more experienced business people and bricklayers about running costs of a business so even though I'm self-employed and there isn't really many overheads there still is a few so we have public liability insurance, which comes out to £80 a month. We have the van tax, which is £35 a month. We have the van insurance, which is £140 a month. So we're looking at £260 a month just to be a bricklayer. That's before you start work. That's what it's costing you to be a bricklayer. Well, that's what it's costing me. And then we've got the fuel to get to the job. So what I did, I took the figure of two hundred and 60 pound and divided that roughly by 30 days okay because that's how much it costs each day to be a bricklayer so about 10 pound so 10 pound a day that's what the price is already starting out at then we have the fuel to get to the job that costs about 15 quid so before i even turn up at the job I already have a price in my head of £25 added on to the quote I will give to make sure that I break even, okay? So I was pretty much there all day, depending on how you want to price it. You wouldn't price it per brick, otherwise you would have made about £30, not even that. So the price of labour is a bit dependent on where you are in the country and things like that. Um, but a going rate in Derby for a bricklayer is about 200 to 230 pound around those areas. So let's go bang in the middle, roughly, and go 220 pound plus 25 pound of my business running cost, which takes it to 245 pound plus the materials, which takes it to 280. So now we have the figure of 280, which includes the materials, my running cost as a business, plus my labour. Uh, what some people also like to do, because this is a business, even though I'm self-employed, it's a business, put on a percentage for a profit, okay? So about 10 to 20%, depends on how you're feeling, really. So let's say 20% of 280 gives us £336. Okay, so that's the cost of this job, plus the scaffolding, which takes the total price of the job to £636. Okay, now obviously I didn't charge for this job at all, and I used to never tot up my running costs as a business and things like that. I would usually just turn up and say, hello, this is my day work. And I would very, very, very rarely take into account fuel, running cost of business, and just all the ferrying around we have to do as bricklayers when you're doing small jobs like this. So yes, anyway, that's just a small breakdown of what it costs to get a small chimney taken down by about six courses and then re rebuilt back up. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm trying to save my family member money so if it was maybe a different client who was slightly old, uh, slightly younger, I would have said, right, let's just rebuild the entire thing. But she's only bothered about the neighbours making sure that nothing's fallen onto their car and things like that. So I'm trying to save her money in every way I can. Um, so, yes, anyway, that is it. I know we've spent a lot of time in the van today, but I can't really help it. Sad. Hope you enjoyed the video. A little insight into pricing jobs and things like that not that i do that anymore because i work for a company um, because i don't like pricing jobs anyway on that note i will catch you next time thank you very much for watching if you've got any questions uh drop me a message uh reach out to me via email if you want me to price a job <laughs> probably after that you won't want me to anyway sad i'll catch you next time